<clears throat> Who do you follow? I mean, really. Who do you follow? You see, when I was up in Alaska, when I lived in Alaska, we would put out, in the winter, well, in the summer for winter, we put out these trail markers. <coughs> and they would just simply be three poles that was set up kind of like a teepee. Now, they're kind of long poles, and they were, oh, probably set, I'm not sure if they were like a quarter mile apart, but they were far apart. And they looked kind of distant, you know, you could barely see them. You know, we'd set them up in the tundra, and they would go for miles, sometimes 20, 30, 40 miles, off into the flat of the tundra, way out in the middle of nowhere. And it was part of a government contract that we had to put these trail markers out, because in the winter, those poles the snow would come up to a certain level, but then you'd still see the top of the pole. And those were the markers for snowmobiles to go to another village. And so between villages, you had these trail markers that would show you the way that you should go. Now, they weren't always easy to see, although they're pretty obvious. There's a certain amount of, you know, we had little little tag on them. I mean, it wasn't like they were big lit up things or anything, because you got to remember, this is Alaska. This is in what we call the bush. This is so far away that you can drive for a day and not see anyone. Literally. So, way out in the middle of nowhere, and this happens to be on the tundra outside of uh, oh, I don't know if it was Kinnikinnik or if it was up in um, Bristol Bay or where it was, but as part of Vegley Air Hall when I was working there, that's what one of our jobs was to do, was to go out and do these things. And it was a contract, and so they were set up and done for the natives, and they were able to travel in the winter, because you see, the villages that are that remote don't get any food except by, in the winter, except by snowmobile or quads. You know, a lot of times it's quads. But in that respect, when you see that these markers always show which way to go, because if you're going in one direction, you can see one part of the marker, or the, the little TV thing, and they would have a marker on it. And if you're going the other direction, you could see the other side. And so they kind of showed you which way you were going, and they showed you where to go. All you really had to do was to see the marker and then to follow it. And that's kind of what God has done in the scriptures. He's given us way markers. As a matter of fact, the word is called a way marker. And what it does is it marks the way. It shows you the way you should go. Now, the humorous part is that you really don't have to go by a way marker. I mean, isn't the old joke that I don't need a map, honey? I know where I'm going. Well, the humorous part is that everybody knows where they're going. They just don't know how to get there. See what I mean? In other words, we know the end result. We know the destination, but we don't always know how to get there. And so everybody's got an opinion of which way they should go. Some people think that you should take the long way around. Other people think you should take a shortcut. But you know, in Alaska, when you see a way marker, you know which way you should go. And the old timers, I'll tell you, they'll tell you, when I see that way marker, I go that way. That's what God wants to do with us, is that Every day that you live, you have the ability to choose what you want to do. You have perfect love, perfect grace, and all kinds of mercy extended to you. 
You can decide to go your way, his way, their way, that way, any way you want to. What you choose to do today is really up to you. Now, I can only tell you that for me, when I look out on my day, I pick up these little way markers. You might call them devotionals. I call them way markers because they mark for me the way I should go. They have in them the wisdom of being placed at just the right moment, just the right time, just the right place in my life to mark the way I should go. And the way that works is that the Holy Spirit was able to so design it that it fits perfectly for me. So it marks the way. Now, maybe for you, you have your own way to go. You have your own map, your own GPS. You have your internal guidance system that, well, you know where east is, you know where west is, you know where north is, you know where south is. But you know, what if the satellites got knocked out and your GPS was gone? <laughs> What if you lost your map? What if you lost your way? And what if you couldn't find your way markers? That could be a problem. My shadow. Learn that each day must be lived in my power and in the consciousness of my presence. Even in the thrill of joy seems to be absent. Remember that if sometimes there seems a shadow on your lives, it is not the withdrawal of my presence. It is my shadow as I stand between you and your foes. Even with your dearest and nearest, there are quiet days when you will be still with me and alone. You do not doubt their love because you do not hear their laughter and feel the thrill of joy as their nearness, but you know they love you anyways because of the experience you have had with them. The quiet gray days are the days for duty. Work in the calm certainty that I am with you. A lot of people will look at that way marker and say, well, I don't feel like it's for me. Well, cool. That's kind of what it was talking about. Don't go by feelings. Well, I don't like what it said. Well, that's true. But it didn't talk about liking it. As a matter of fact, if I could give you a real insight into these way markers in the summer, there are people that go out there and see these poles, and they have no idea why those poles are there in the summer. Because you're out there in the middle of tundra. Now, tundra is kind of a, it's a squishy ground. Now, underneath there's permafrost. But on top of it, there's kind of like this, oh, could be sometimes an inch. Well, it's never an inch, but it could be like six inches to a foot to several feet deep, sometimes as much as 10 feet or 12 feet, tundra. And it's just kind of like little lichen that grow and they get frozen in the winter and they die off and then they grow back. In the summer months when it warms up, sometimes things get in the tundra and actually sink. And that's one way that a lot of people get rid of a lot of things is they just leave it in the tundra and it sinks down in and it's covered over by tundra. But in the summer, when they come across these holes that are out in the middle of nowhere, that are standing by themselves and they can't see the next way marker down the way, they just see the one way marker and they see these three poles. And there's maybe a number on it, it might say like H1, N2, which is kind of like a little code to let the people who put out the way markers know which one it is so that you could go onward. And if you had the map of all the way markers, you could follow it all over Alaska, as a matter of fact. You could go to all kinds of villages you never knew were out there. As a matter of fact, you kind of don't know where you're going when you first come across one of those way markers in the summer. And if you looked way far away trying to see them in the summer, they're not that easy because, you see, in the summer also, Lots of bushes grow up, and they grow as tall as trees because of the long summer days. And that's why we call in Alaska that wilderness area where nothing 
nobody seems to live. We call it the bush because of that reason. Plants grow as tall as trees, and it kind of looks like trees in the summer, and then it dies off in the winter. That's why it's called the bush. But when you see these wave markers, these poles that are standing, you don't know what they're for. And I've seen people, you know, kind of go up and knock them down, and, you know, play with them, and some people have set them on fire, and some people have cut them up and used them for firewood. <laughs> huh. But, guess what? If they used the way marker, the way it was designed, and the purpose it was for, they could follow it and find their way to their destination. It's kind of interesting that way, isn't it? If you don't know what it's for, it might not be of any use to you. But once you discover what it is, that way marker just might take you all the way home to where you should be. So each day, maybe you should find your way markers. Maybe you should take one. And then as you go onward, you'll see the next way marker tomorrow. But today, I think you just heard your first way marker of the way you should go. Because the Spirit of God can make it obvious to you whether you're in the way, out of the way, on the way, or just, by the way, going the wrong way. It's just a way marker.